Hi everyone, this lesson is on eyelid twitching, which is also known as eyelid myokymia. So eyelid myokymia is a condition involving muscle spasms of the eyelid. So it can look like this. So these muscle spasms are going to be contractions or twitching of the eyelid. Now this is a benign and self-limiting condition, and it's often not associated with other conditions. And I say often not because it may be an early finding in some conditions. So it may be an early finding of certain autoimmune diseases, multiple sclerosis, hemifacial spasm, and some other conditions as well. Now, eyelid myokymia is actually the most common facial myokymia disorder. Now, the incidence and prevalence is unknown in the general population, but what is known is that this condition has a higher likelihood in medical students, and it is one of what we call the medical student's disease, which is just a broad term for any condition that may more likely occur or seem to more likely occur in medical students as they learn about diseases. And some of the reasons why this condition may more likely occur in medical students is due to fatigue and stress, which are some of the triggers of eyelid myokymia, which we're going to talk about in more detail later on in this lesson. So the pathophysiology of this condition is not well understood. But what is known is that the orbicularis oculi, which is the muscle that surrounds the eye, is affected in this condition. Now, the orbicularis oculi is the muscle responsible for eyelid closure. And what seems to occur in eyelid myokymia is that the nerve fibers leading to the orbicularis oculi muscle are likely affected. So what this does is it leads to soft and gentle contractions of the muscle. The contractions of this muscle can be described as a ripple-like. They're often going to be continuous and constant as well. And when doing specific measurements of the contractions of the orbicularis oculine muscle, there is a 3 to 8 hertz discharge rate, and the discharge interval is 100 to 200 milliseconds. Now let's talk about the clinical features of this condition. So this condition involves eyelid twitching, as we mentioned before. So eyelid twitching, again, is going to look something like this. It's going to occur unilateral, which means it's going to occur on one side. Bilateral cases can occur, although they're going to be rare. So bilateral meaning that both sides, so the left side and the right side, or the left eye and the right eye are going to be affected in some cases. And the lower eyelid is going to be most commonly affected more than the upper eyelid, but either one can be affected. And it's often going to occur continuously and occur periodically. Now the duration of these eyelid twitching episodes can last between seconds to hours. And the episodes can occur intermittently. So there can be an episode where there's eyelid twitching for seconds, and then it can stop, and then it can come back later and twitch for minutes, and so on. Now, in some cases, the episodes of eyelid twitching can last for a very long time. And in in fact, it can last for upwards of weeks. Now, this would be considered chronic eyelid myokymia, and it's more likely to occur in female patients and in cold weather. So those are the clinical features of eyelid myokymia, and it's also important to note that there is no muscle atrophy and no muscle weakness. So patients can open and close their eyes with no issue. Let's talk about the etiologies or the causes and some of the potential triggers for this condition. Now, it's important to note that the etiology is not entirely known, but there are several factors that are associated with the onset of eyelid twitching. One of them is going to be stress. So being stressed is more likely to lead to eyelid myokymia. We can also see fatigue. So fatigue is associated with eyelid myokymia as well. Exercise can also increase the likelihood of having eyelid twitching. We can also see caffeine, especially excessive caffeine use. And then alcohol consumption can also lead to eyelid myokymia as well and in some cases smoking. So I add smoking here, but alcohol consumption is going to be the main one. And then certain medications can also lead to eyelid myokymia or are associated with eyelid myokymia. And these can include topiramate, flunarazine, and clozapine. So if any of these medications caused eyelid twitching, we would call this medication-induced eyelid myokymia. Now let's talk about how clinicians diagnose and treat eyelid myokymia. So this is going to be clinical diagnosis. So we see a twitching eyelid and we see some of the triggers and there are no other issues or no other signs or symptoms that is enough to make the diagnosis. It is possible to assess for other conditions if they are suspected. As we mentioned before, this can be a condition that can be an early sign of other conditions like multiple sclerosis or other autoimmune conditions. So how do clinicians treat this condition? This is a self-limiting condition. As we mentioned before, it's benign, it's self-limiting. So often no treatment or intervention is necessary. 
So supportive treatments like simply rest and waiting is enough as again, this is a self-limiting condition. And as mentioned before, it only often lasts for seconds, but it may last up to hours in some cases. In other cases, though, it can be important to identify those triggers or associated factors that we talked about before. So reducing or eliminating caffeine intake can help. Smoking and alcohol sensation can also help as well. And if any of those medications that we talked about before, if they are leading to excessive, troublesome eyelid myokymia, there may be a case where one of those medications may be altered. Again, in the case of medication-induced eyelid myokymia. And then in some cases, a botulinum toxin injection may be utilized, and this will often lead to about 12 to 18 weeks of relief. This can be used in very refractory cases that simply do not resolve on their own or are very troublesome to the patient or in patients who have chronic eyelid myokymia. So if you want to learn more about other ophthalmology conditions, please check out my ophthalmology playlist. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. Thanks so much for watching, and hope to see you next time.